Hello, Dancing with the Stars fans. I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with uh, our contributors, Jeffrey Kerr and Cordell Martin, here to uh, discuss the semifinals on Dancing with the Stars and then to preview the finals uh, on Dancing with the Stars, the three hour finale that we're getting uh, on December 5th. Um, and let's start with who's going to be there, which is to say all five semifinalists. Um, at the end of the show, I was a little annoyed, not that they were all making it, I was very happy for every single one of them, but that they played that dirty trick on, you know, especially at the end, Ariana and Sochi, you know, making it seem like one of them would be eliminated. And I bet Ariana was looking over at Sochi and thinking, oh, it's me, I'm out, um, until they announced that both are in. Um, what, did, what did you think about that, uh, Cordell, having five in the finale and, and how they announced it? Yeah. Um very curious as to what was the rationale behind having five um contestants like i'm not sure the producers probably thought like it was a fan favorite going home and probably was like you know what let's just change the rules and pick five contestants like something just seemed a little fishy about that in my opinion um but to your point i'm happy that all five get the chance to do a freestyle and make it to the finale um, I really like the final five. I think each of them have done a great job, um, whether it's just being consistent every week or having that growth arc uh, throughout the season. Um, also did not appreciate the fake out elimination <laughs> for Sochi and um, Ariana. Like when I saw that that was the bottom two, I was like, something's not adding up here. Like make it make sense. So um, glad they were able to make it, but I think it was just bad on the, the producers to, you know, put them in the hot seat like that and make them sweat it out. <laughs> yeah, it does really make me wonder who would have gone home if they played it straight. Like, would it have been Allison and they really wanted her to have like that fan favorite moment in the finale? Or would it have been someone where they're like, oh no, we can't let this person go home. It would have that... been some, some crazy shocker. Yeah. Um, what what did you think about it, Jeffrey? No, well, I must admit, while I did predict Ellison to be eliminated like a majority of people, I had this feeling that things weren't going to go according to plan. And so when Zochi and Ariana were announced for the bottom two, I was like, oh, we're probably in for a big shocker. And I did not expect the big shocker to be no elimination at all, but... Hey, I'm glad that all five of them are in the finale because I think this is probably one of the strongest lineups we've had in a while. So hey, I'm hey, I'm glad no one's going home. Well, no one went home this past week, and then you no, know, all five, including Allison, will get a chance to hopefully shine the best they can next week. And you know, one thing that's uh, interesting is that since they went back to announcing. Um, like uh, uh, the three in jeopardy and not actually revealing who is in the bottom. Like we've been able to predict the mirror ball trophy winner just based on who is the only celebs who have not been at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now we don't know. Nope. Um, so like it, it could be, we've been underestimating charity this whole time. She's been bachelor nation is just there for her and she's going to win. Who knows? Um, it, or, or Ariana, maybe, uh, uh or, you know, who knows? Maybe there was a week where if they had announced the bottom two, Sochi would have been one of them. We don't know. Um, so so that'll be uh, interesting. Uh, but speaking of Sochi, uh, she had two perfect dances on uh, the semifinals, a samba and a waltz. Uh, she uh, survived her samba. She, uh, she perfected it. Uh, I feel bad for Jason Mraz more so after having seen her do so well with hers. Um, and then I thought, oh, there's no way she's going to be able to follow that up with a waltz in the second round. It's going to be anticlimactic. And then it was one of the most beautiful things of the season. Um, what did you think about her, Cordell? Uh, like, how many how many uh, superlatives do we have? Listen, like, you can just go on and on and day for day. It's about Sochi and her journey on this show. Um to your point, I thought her waltz was probably one of the most beautiful routines I've ever seen on Dance with Stars. I think it really did a great job of capturing her journey and especially her coming into herself as a young woman, um, especially just that closing piece at the end with the roses. It just felt like you were watching a movie. Um, and for me, that was the dance that I was like, okay, this is your winner. But 
you know, there was other great dances too, but for me, that really just captured the season for me. What did you think of her, Jeffrey? Well, I mean, it's no surprise at this point to see her continue to do such incredible work. I mean, I mean, incredibly such in the first round and amazing, well, probably even more amazing work in the second round. Yeah, and I still do have Zochi winning. Yeah, it would not surprise me if she if she did win and it'd be incredibly well deserved. And but yeah, I mean, I mean, just I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it a log. I mean, it's still competitive, but yeah, I think, well, I saw, yeah, I think she's probably a safe bet to predict for first place, but, you know, hey, I'm certainly curious to see how next week's going to shape up. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the freestyle, because I think one of the big challenges for Val uh, is going to be that she can do so much, uh, and she has so much range, like, what, what do you even narrow that down into for one routine? Um, is it going to be over the top or is it going to be one of those more pared down numbers that just shows off her skill? Um, I, you know, it's going to be great, I think, but I'm going to make a prediction. It's not going to be as good as that waltz. It's, okay. you know, that waltz is just going to be, is going to live on. That's, that's, that's her moment of the season yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then there's Charity uh, Lawson who uh, performed a rumba, big challenge. Can she, com- can she emote? Can she emote? Can she emote? Um, the judges were divided. Uh, Derek thought, uh, I'm still not getting it, but Bruno, who mauled Derek, um, uh, thought that the emotions were there. Carrie Ann and Abba, who's been the primary critic, uh, felt the emotions were there. I thought, I thought she either felt the real emotions or was much better at acting it. Um, what did you think, Cordell? Yeah, um, as we discussed last week, my concern was for Charity in terms of would she be able to bring the emotion um, specifically for the rumba. I thought she did an amazing job um, with the choreography as well as getting into character. Um, That was one of the few dances, I think, in addition to her contemporary, where we really just felt that raw emotion. Um, And then with her quick step, I mean, that was a nuts way to also show just like a fun, energetic and vibrant side to charity. Um, I think once she got the scores that she wanted for the Rumba, that really got her in, you know, game mode to really kill kill the uh, quick step. Yeah. And the quick step was also helpful for her because it's not as emotional a dance. So she didn't have to worry as much about like connecting emotionally to the material. It's a much more physical uh, exactly. This kind of routine. Uh, what did you think of her dances, Jeffrey? Oh, yeah, well, I thought both were great. You know, I thought, you know, first was very, very stunning. And second, well, they just really brought the house down that I thought. And yes, it may be a cliche at this point to have a Dancing with the Stars finale with, alum, with an alum from Bachelor Nation, but she's absolutely one of the strongest ones on the show oh, throughout its whole history. So, hey, I'm not complaining about her. Um, and then there's uh, Ariana Maddox. Uh, she, uh, in her first dance, like she wasn't giving away that she was in pain, um, but like you could see like the smile was a little bit more muted, a little bit strained in places where it's just like, oh, she's feeling something. Um, so I felt for her there. I really, again, she's not letting it stop her. Her, her you know, she uh, had uh, one dance that uh, got, you know, her first dance got great scores her second dance was perfect uh from from the judge's perspective and uh you know so let's just hope that it holds out enough to get her through the finale it's going to be a demanding finale um what did you think about her Cordell yeah I mean as predicted she did two um great routines um I'm curious as to how she's gonna do um next week Um, Because she definitely was someone who I thought would be a spoiler for Sochi. However, I feel like she's kind of now teetering into that third, fourth position um, as Jason has kind of moved back to the top um, with his performances. Um, But I wouldn't count her out. I just think that she's kind of in that plateau uh, point, which unfortunately is the last week of the season. So, but I still think she's going to do a great job next week. And I thought she did great this week as well. 
Yeah, I'm I'm a little worried for her too, just because I feel like she came in with the least name recognition. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Bravo reality stars haven't done well traditionally. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting sort of Amanda Plutz vibes, where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, she's one of the best dancers, and then ends yeah. up maybe fourth or something like that. Mm -hmm. What did you think of her, Jeffrey? Oh, you! I thought you guys just made some great points. I mean, I currently have Ariana finishing seconds, but I mean, yeah, you guys might be onto something that she may not be as competitive for the win at this point as we might think she is. Although, you know, I thought she really did such provided such incredible energy in both her routines. So, I mean, I I thought she did great work, but yeah, I mean. I mean, she may not be as close to Zochi for the win as we might think. Yeah, and uh, the person who might be, maybe I think, uh, Jason Mraz is is having you know a, an arc of his own, um, where he started strong, started to fumble a little bit, forgot his steps during his samba, uh, and then two weeks in a row delivers a perfect dance, and in two of the most energetic and powerful dance styles that you can ask for the Argentine tango and in the semifinals, the Paso Doble. Um, yeah, I thought the judges were a little hard on his first routine. Um, you know, I, I felt like they were, they were looking for reasons to kind of be like, oh, here's something we can nitpick. Um, but the Paso was undeniable. Uh, what did you think, Cordell? Yeah, I mean, to your point, he really needed to have that breakthrough moment again. Um, and he did it at the right moment. Um, to your point, I thought that both his routines were stellar. Uh, really love the Paso. I mean, usually for the male celebrities, you can kind of get away with just, you know, getting into the character, have that little aggression, do a couple of fancy moves and, you know, spin your partner around and get great scores. But for him to really dive right into just the technique and really giving his all, um, that's probably was like one of the best male celebrity apostles I've seen on the show. So and from the only male celebrity left in the competition. Exactly. Yeah, oh, our, uh, female celebs. <laughs> uh what did you think, Jeffrey? Well well yeah, I agree that yeah, I mean Jason's arc on this whole season has been a really interesting one and starting off strong, but then you know Probably fumbled a little a couple points, but, you know, I've really gone back on top these past couple of weeks. You know, I thought his first dance was excellent. His second was incredible. So, I mean, and, you know, Daniel, you were, of course, early on really, I guess, hope predicting, you know, him for the win or at least have him on top two or somewhere. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he can really make it to the final two at least yeah and uh you know we uh his partner is daniela karagach who's married to ariana's partner pasha pashkov i'm not sure i mean we've got five people in the finals this time and sometimes we've had four people in the finals so i'm not sure if this is the first time a husband and wife have made the finals depending on where they finish it would be the first husband and wife i believe in the in the top three if they both make the top three um uh, which would be incredible. I mean, Daniela has already, this is Daniela's third time in the finals and, uh, you know, Pasha's first. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm excited to see that. What about you, Cordell? Yeah, I mean, Daniela's probably been one of my favorite pros, well, newer pros to come on to Dancing with the Stars. I mean, I think she just brings a sense of excitement and energy with her performances she does a great job of choreographing to her partner's strengths um I mean that's evident with her partnership with Nelly and Iman you know those are two people on paper that you wouldn't even think would make it to the finals or let alone win in Iman's case um and then Pasha I think he's coming to his own with Ariana it's a great pairing they got great chemistry um so it's great for him to have his moment as well what do you think about them, Jeffrey? Well, well, yeah, I think it's nice that they both made the finals together, and I'm sure they're probably wishing the finals will come down to Ariana and Jason, just so that either one of them could walk away with the Len Goodman Mirabal Trophy for both of them to keep at their house. So, but yeah, I think both have really, really provided such top-notch work this past seasons, and. 
And, you know, it's, it's what's especially be remarkable for Daniela, who, you know, in on her first two seasons, she at least made it to the finals. And, you know, first with Nelly, she came in third, then with Amon, she won. And then, and, you know, last season, well, didn't last far with Joseph Benea. And for Pasha, yeah, I mean, this would definitely be a, a, a lot well yeah I, so hey i'm certainly it should be well hopefully they'll have a they'll say to each other may the best dancer win <laughs> uh, and this is already pasha's best results so far by far uh, <laughs> yeah so so it's very happy for him to have gotten where he is uh it'll be interesting to see his uh, choreo uh, choreography medal when he gets to really show it off in, in uh, freestyle. Um, and then there's, of course, the potential dark horse, uh, Allison Hannigan. Um, now, I don't I don't even want to, like, it feels mean to mention her in the same breath with Bobby Bones, but I feel like that's the same path to victory that she could potentially have. Like, you know, someone with the lower scores mm -hmm. and is her fan support enough because I mean, she's gonna have the lowest scores on the finale. Like she, she almost definitely is, unless someone like literally breaks a leg on the dance floor. Um, you know, which is which is no slight to her. Like she, you know, she's up against three technically strong dancers, and she's uh, really growing in in her journey. She's the oldest celebrity in the competition left by a decade. Um, the next, you know, uh, she's in her, I, I believe she's 47, 48. And, you know, next is Ariana, who's 38. So, uh, uh, you know, she's, uh, you know, up there and would be one of the older winners, potentially. Um, but, yeah, I thought she had a good night. Um, I thought her, her, uh, uh, her jive was solid. Um, mm -hmm. And then I thought she had her best dance with her waltz. Uh, it was such a great last if it had been her last dance it would have been a great last dance uh but it was a great dance to get her into the finals too because it, it it made that not like a weird moment it, it felt it felt like she earned it what did you think Cordell yeah I mean to your point I think she definitely is the underdog I'm happy it's her and not other contestants without saying any names uh, <laughs> um I felt to your point her waltz was her best dance by far um, and then I just got the sense that, you know, she felt like, okay, this is time to close this chapter and even just the judges. So it just felt very like odd. So I was like, well, guys, her fans might rally behind her and push her through the final. So once her name was called first, I was like, up oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of, you know, for her in the finals, I don't think she's going to win just due to the competition, um, and who she's against. Um, I think she might do as well as possibly fourth um, when it's all said and done, because I think she's still going to have that underdog narrative. There's going to be people who's just going to root for her just because she represents the true essence of Dancing with the Stars, having stars with no dance experience and see their journey. So I think she's going to have that extra boost to at least place fourth um, at the highest on the show. So. What do you think of her, uh, Jeffrey, and, and uh, her dances and her chances? Okay. Okay. Dances, I thought they literally, she and Sasha literally rocked the ballroom with, in the first round and the second round, absolutely touching work. And yeah, you know, she probably is the underdog of the season. How, you know, her journey has been from the beginning to now. So, I mean, I do currently have her in fifth place, but, you know, and, you know, if she does continue the, her strong work from the last few weeks, you know, she could move up a notch a bit, especially if her fans, be even beyond you, Daniel, are there for her. <laughs> well, I'm going to play it fair in the finale. I'm going to call it like I see it in terms of how I vote. Uh, I've decided I'm going to give who I genuinely think is the best in the finale 10 points, then 8 then six, then four, then two. You know, just be fair, like spread it out, give everybody some points, but give them points proportionate to how I think they did. Um, so, uh, you know, and if Allie is fit for me, I'm going to give her those two points and I'm going to be happy for her no matter where she ends up. Um, 
because she's wonderful. Um, <laughs> and uh, that brings us to next week's dances. Um, uh, they have been announced. Um, and obviously there are two rounds, the redemption round and the freestyle round. The freestyle round, we know the dance style. They're all freestyles. Um, but we'll go over what music they're uh, dancing to. That could give us some clue to the energy, at least, of the freestyle. Um, but first, the redemption round, uh, starting with Jason Mraz, who I kind I, I thought and was afraid that they would have him redo the samba. Like, no. and that felt like something like, oh my, like, is that like a monkey he wants off his back? Like, does he want to redo the samba and actually really hit it? Uh, but no, no, they they did not give him the samba. They gave him the fox shot uh, to uh, "Fly Me to the Moon" by Frank Sinatra. Uh, sounds classy. Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, that might have been that first ballroom dance that he had, where he had trouble in hold, uh, looked a little uncomfortable. He's gotten much more comfortable in the ballroom style since then. Uh, what do you think, Wardo? Yeah, I think this is going to be another uh, great dance with Jason. I think this. Um dance style really suits him and his strengths along with the dance i mean with the song choice as well um so i definitely expect him to get a perfect score or near perfect score with this routine what do you think jeffrey oh yeah like you know i think jason not only has a great classic hit to dance to but yeah it should be interesting to see how he can really improve on it from the previous time he danced to it and see how he could do better this time especially with you know the how he's sort of had redemption arc himself these past few weeks and uh yeah but someone did get the samba for their redemption um <laughs> and it's it's her poor back ariana oh. they gave ariana the samba as her redemption dance to spice up your life by the spice girls um I hope she's okay. <laughs> they should let her do her freestyle first, just so that she's in peak condition when she does it. Because <laughs> I'm I'm trying to think about those samba roles. Like, yeah. Oh, I hope she's okay. Um, what, what what do you think about that routine, Cordell? Oh, poor baby. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, I think she's gonna be able to, you know, just channel her inner spice girl and kill the samba hopefully doesn't kill her but i think she's gonna do fine um once again another great song choice with that fan style um yeah as long as you know she's able to push through the injury i think she'll get another high scoring um high scores from the judges not sure if she's gonna be able to pull a perfect score but we shall see what do you think jeffrey well, that is an interesting song choice. And, you know, you know, I mean, I could, you know, no matter how she does going through this injury when putting this dance together, you know, I could see it potentially getting her some sympathy votes from the fans if they thought she did the best she possibly could. So, yeah, I'm certainly has my intrigue. Uh, then we've got Charity Lawson and Artem Chigvensev. They will perform a tango to... Liber Tango by Aster Piazzola. I'm sorry if I uh, butchered that name. Um, I don't remember her original tango. Just like I also don't remember Ariana's original samba. So maybe that's a sign that they should have re redo them. <laughs> that memorable. Um, uh, you know, she killed the Argentine variety of the tango. Uh, this one, she won't be able to do like flips and tricks uh, in the same way as the Argentine tango. Uh, but yeah, I think I think they're gonna. I think the challenge here is they they want they saw the rumba and they're like, okay, now we want you to go back to the tango and show us the emotion and the personality and the attack. Uh, what do you think, Cordell? Yeah, I think this is like a full circle moment for Charity because the tango was her first dance and she topped the leaderboard uh, in week one with the tango. Um, so I think it'll be a great full circle moment for her to show the judges her growth um, as it pertains to her performance piece with her dances. Um, I think also just the song choice seems like a very traditional song that will really fit the tango. So luckily she doesn't have anything too contemporary that will kind of, you know, throw off the dance style. Um, yeah, I think this will be another high scoring dance for her as well. Sound like a broken record because all of these <laughs> stars are so good. 
Um, but I think this will help her be competitive, at least uh, for the mirror ball. What do you think, Jeffrey? Well, yeah, I echo a lot of what Cordell just said. So, yeah, it's, there'll definitely be something interesting to watch is, you know, how, you know, Charity did, you know, in her first when at the beginning of the show to now to the finale. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how much she's grown since then to see how much, you know, her performance to that will evolve within these past, you know, couple of months. So, yeah, I certainly am curious to see it. Uh, and this one will be a quick discussion. Sochi Gomez and Val Murkowski will perform a Foxtrot to Unconditionally by Katy Perry. She'll get a 30. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, enough said. We already know she's going to kill it. She's going to have a perfect score with this routine and her freestyle. So, yeah, moving yeah. along. <laughs> what do you think, Oh, well, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I just don't see how she could possibly disappoint next week. So, enough said. <laughs> uh, and then Allison Hannigan and Sasha Farber, uh, they will perform a salsa to Get On Your Feet by Gloria Stefan. I do remember her salsa, and that is unfortunate. Um, uh, that was her first dance, and it was it was kind of an unmitigated disaster. Uh, as much as I love Ali, uh, you know, that dance, you know, she was just getting her legs under her and she you know wasn't really with the choreography and and she I think she'll do much better with it like it's this is going to be the chance to show how far she's come uh but I am a little scared for her just because of you know if there are any still lingering doubts that come from how that dance went the first time but what do you think Cordell? Yeah, I feel like the producers tried it by giving her <laughs> this dance um however like with charity i think it'll be a great way just to see the growth because i think she's going to definitely do a lot better than her first week um dancing um with that said i feel like there's still going to be a couple little wobby moments throughout the routine where she's just gonna throw up her hands and be like you know what i'm not gonna win dance stars i'm just gonna have fun so we'll probably see a lot of that sprinkle into the routine um but yeah this dance style is not going to help her get the mirror ball unless her fans really rally behind her. <laughs> what, what do you think, Jeffrey? Well, I agree with a lot of what Cordell just said. Yeah. I mean, it, again, it should be interesting to see, you know, if there is how much of a butterfly effect there is on Allison this coming week, as opposed to, you know, when she last did it. I mean, she's got a great song choice to back her up. I you know it's obviously more to do with what she does with a dance to that song. So, I mean, hey, look, even if Allison doesn't make it beyond fifth place, hopefully she at least tries the best she can with this. And that brings us to the freestyles, uh, starting with Jason Mraz. Um, his freestyle will be to Happy by C2C featuring Derek Martin. I'm not sure if that's like a variation on Pharrell's Happy or a completely different song whatsoever. Um, uh, so I like I'm not I'm not too familiar. What do you think, Cordell? Yeah, um, I might have to do some research to see if that's just a different version of Pharrell's Happy or what uh, that is to really kind of gauge how his freestyle is going to go. Um, like I said, Daniela is probably one of the more creative um, pros on the show. So I definitely think she's going to have something um, worth watching as a viewer for us. Um, and I think it's definitely going to be probably one of the show stopping uh, freestyles of the night. What do you think, Jeffrey? Well, yeah, I think, you know, well, again, I'm too not familiar with this song. If it's a different happy song entirely, unless it's, of course, it is a cover of, you know, Pharrell's happy song. But yeah, I mean, you know, given how strong Jason has been these past couple of weeks, hey, I'm, I'm think well, hopefully he'll continue that with, you know, well, I guess both dances he's got coming up on the finale. So, hey, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, then we've got Ariana Maddox. She and Pasha will perform their freestyle to Run the World Girls by Beyonce and Level Up by Ciara. Um, <clears throat> I feel like they're uh, really telegraphing what kind of a, a, a dance that will be, you know, really kind of completing her girl power arc after uh, her, her scandal that, you know, led into Dancing with the Stars. Um, so, uh, 
yeah, I mean, as long as she's healthy, I feel like this is going to be kind of a, a, a badass routine. Uh, what do you think, Cordell? Yeah, to your point, I mean, those are two high energetic songs. And if you're going to do Beyonce, you better do it right. So Ariana, girl, <laughs> you better bring it or the Beehive's going to come get you. Um, but I think she'll be fine. I think to your point, um, just with her whole storyline, with her being cast on the show, it'll just be a great way for her to kind of spin a negative experience into something positive. Um, with dance stars um, and along with this freestyle so I'm definitely excited to see what they're going to pull with this routine a little nervous for her because she has two high energetic dances with this and the samba that I hope it doesn't you know with her injury really mess her up in terms of really just giving that full-out performance that we know she can deliver on for some reason I I envision the run the world part being her like leading sort of like a formation of the the female pros like like yeah. I, it's just the, an image i have in my head that like will not be surprised same here and then with like the level up piece too because sierra does a lot of like dances with uh the female um dancers as well in her video for level up so it's definitely going to see a lot of like formation-esque movements <laughs> what do you think jeffrey well, hey, I'm well. I, well, with Ariana, especially, I'm so especially curious to see how she'll do. You know, you know, she has, you know, obviously the backstory. She has, you know, all the skills in the ballroom. So, and yeah, this is this should definitely will be, you know, interesting and hopefully exciting to watch too. Um, then Charity Lawson, uh, her freestyle will be to. Uh, uh, Lose My Breath by Destiny's Child and Sueltate by Sammy and Jarina DeMarco featuring Anita and Bia. I feel like Artem is challenging her to be like, girl, connect and bring it. <laughs> like, we, like, you know, she, he's like, he's not letting her off the hook with these, with these songs. He's not letting her just be pretty and dainty. Like this is, this is going to have some, have some, swagger to it if she can pull it off what do you think Cordell yeah another person you know tackling Beyonce this time with Destiny's Child um love it as you know a fellow Beehive member but anywho I think this will be great for her to um kind of show her versatility as a dancer I mean she'll have like the tango that's just more like intimate and passionate and this freestyle will let her just to let loose and have fun and show her show off her athleticism so um yeah as long as it's not like a hot mess I mean it's two different types of genres with like you know pop R&B going with like the Latin piece um as long as they can kind of infuse the two genres together and make it cohesive it should be um a great routine for charity in Artem oh we, we were we're gonna have two different genres coming up a little later too oh That's sweet very, very odd Lower. Um, <laughs> Yeah. What, what do you think about Charity's uh, dances, uh, your, her, her uh, freestyle potentially? Oh, okay. Well, well, I mean, there's probably a lot of potential for her to do well here. And, you know, I think, well, well again, you know, I don't know, again, where she'll end up finishing in the final tallies is obviously, you know, a question mark. But, you know, I think, again, she has, you know, a lot, again, a lot of potential to do the best she possibly can with this. Uh, Sochi Gomez will be performing her freestyle to Que Calor by District 78. Um, yeah, it, that's, it makes me think that Val is going to lean into, like, that moment when Carrie and Anaba told her, like, you remind me of a young Rita Moreno. Um, like, mm. I would love to see that uh, kind of energy from her and that kind of personality from her again. Um, uh, you know, I could be completely wrong, but, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the vibe I'm getting. Uh, what do you think, Cordell? Yeah, that's what I think, too. I think Val is going to go more towards just, like, telling a story and painting a picture, kind of like what Mark and Charlie did for their freestyle last year. So I think he's going to take a page out of that book, which I think will be very smart, especially for someone like Sochi, Sochi, instead of, you know, trying to do a hybrid of different genres and whatever's current and popular. I think just being more traditional and kind of stepping outside of the box, especially with her age, is really going to help her 
um, with this freestyle. <clears throat> what do you think, Jeffrey? Well, 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 yeah, I think, well, again, like we said last, well, in the first round one, I think Zoji, I just don't see how she could possibly disappoint, well, anyway, in both rounds this coming week. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. No pressure, Sochi. <laughs> <laughs> we just think you're going to get tens on it. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the odd one, I'm not sure uh, how this one's going to work out. Allison Hannigan um, and Sasha Farber, they'll perform to Enchanted Taylor's Version by Taylor Swift. So she's mm-hmm. going to get another Taylor Swift. And Poppy by Jennifer Lopez. So I am, you know what? Actually, I'm now the most excited to see what this is going to be. <laughs> because like like you said, Cordell, like this could be her moment where it's like, I don't think I'm going to win the Mirrorball trophy. Let me just go out there and just th- put it on the floor and have fun. Um, this could be that. Uh, and I, I really, really want to see that and see what Sasha has in mind with uh, those two songs uh, on, on one routine. <laughs> what do you think, Cordell? Cool. Um... It's definitely going to be entertaining. I will say that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see how he's going to pull this off. I could definitely see like the little Cinderella moment with the Taylor Swift song, you know, just her coming to her own and then the poppy piece playing more to her yeah, yeah, yeah. and just having like a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> <laughs> well she's certainly got some you know interesting artists and songs to do mashup to uh, well and, and dancing to but yeah you know given how much of an underdog allison has been all season long it's definitely gonna be interesting to see how she'll do well next week in general but yeah too her dancing round too especially i think it's definitely gonna be a really interesting thing to watch out for um, and that's not all we're getting in the finale. We've got 10 dancers, two routines, that's, uh, or five dancers, uh, five couples, two routines, 10 dances overall. So you've got to fill a three-hour show with a little bit more than that. Um, we're going to have the uh, all, thir- all of the season 32 couples are going to be back for uh, a, a routine to Young Hearts Run Free by Candy Statton, uh, choreographed by Ray Leeper. Um, there will also be uh, a jolly routine, as the press release says, to Santa Claus is Coming to Town by Mariah Carey, uh, featuring oh. Alfonso Ribeiro, Julianne Hough, and surprise guests. Um, and that will be choreographed by Britt Stewart and Alan Burstyn. Um, Jason Mraz, in addition to his two dances, poor guy, uh, he's got a lot to do because he's giving a musical performance of uh, his song, I Feel Like Dancing. Um, which will be accompanied by dancers from the Dancing with the Stars tour um, and choreographed by Mandy Moore. Um, And then Charlie D'Amelio and Mark Ballas will perform a new routine set to uh, Give It To Me Baby by Rick James. So that is a lot going on. Uh, (laughs) What do you think about uh, like all of that? It just in general, like what are you looking forward to for now? Um, I mean, kudos to the production team this season. I think they really did a great job of getting back to the essence of the show. Um, I think in terms of just focusing on the celebrities, really letting the pros just do their job and really showcase, you know, their talents. Um, and even just with this finale just reminds me of the golden ages of dancing with the stars, where it's just all these performances and freestyles and all of that so um i'm excited to really just see how everything unfolds um for the night how about you jeffrey well i echo a lot what cordell just said and what i will add well yeah it's definitely gonna be interesting to see how they'll sprinkle all these bonus dances among you know the competitive dances but yeah you know a three-hour finale hey ish this should hopefully be a lot of fun and yeah, no, hopefully, you know, it all comes together well and ends on a high note. I can't remember, did we get uh, like the obligatory Derek Huff any real uh, routine this season or no? I don't think we did. No, I don't, I don't recall. Yeah, neither yeah. do I. Yeah. He usually has a routine, just like an exhibition routine 
uh, where he just kind of shows off what he does, which is oh, yeah. I wonder if he's just letting his sister do that this season. <laughs> uh, well, or, you know, he's got uh, other projects in the works. You know, I'm sure choreographing a routine for the show is not like the most simple endeavor. Uh, <laughs> so, and he's also like full time judging and, you know, so uh -huh. it's no slight to him, but like I was a little surprised that, you know, yeah, because because he because he gets an Emmy nomination almost every year that he submits, um, so you know he he probably has something else in store for the for the calendar. You know? um, but with that, um, I'm wishing everybody luck on the uh, on the show, all five couples, um, and uh, I I look forward to seeing what they do. And I want to thank Jeffrey and Cordell for joining me as always. And I would like to thank everyone for watching or listening. And uh, we will see you next week when we will discuss who won Dancing with the Stars season 32. See you then.